While the ink on my last nib review still dries, let's do another. So I've got the delicious nib candy box. And we have three nibs left in here to review and they're all three crow quills. I'm gonna grab the brass one to start with. Actually, I'll do myself, do tomorrow me a favor and grab one of the silvers and then I'll just have the silver and the brass. Come on. I like this container a lot for organizing nibs and it's almost perfectly sized, but it can be hard for me to grab one or two sol lonely solitary nibs out of there. So today we're looking at, looks like the good old Hunt 102. So we're going to need a different kind of nib holder. We've got a crow, which might work. We've got one of the Galatz nib holder. There we go. I think I'm gonna use that. Doo -doo -doo. So hunt 102 today. This is probably one you guys are familiar with. This is probably one you've used. And we are inking today in the Denik Inktober notebook, not a favorite, but I use what I have, just a disclaimer. If you are looking for a paper that is better suited to dip pens, I do strongly recommend Strathmore's 500 series plate Bristol. Um, and we're also inking with Dealer Rowney FW acrylic ink in Payne's gray. Not gray Payne's like my cat, but Payne's gray. Well, the Hunt 102 is pretty dang ubiquitous for dip pen nibs. But if you guys haven't figured this out about me, I, I like to collect them all when it comes to art supplies. So when it comes to reviews, I like to do reviews of everything. And there's a bit of flex to it. Um, it doesn't put down too, too much ink, which is really, whoa. Well, I didn't splatter. I thought it was going to splatter everywhere because it caught that paper good. And these little sharp crow quills, even the nicest ones are kind of prone to doing that. And this paper is really <laughs> prone to getting caught. I have fewer papers on the plate Bristol, but it's got a good amount of flex. Doesn't put down too much ink, which is refreshing after some of the reviews we've done where I'm waiting like 30 minutes for my ink to dry. It's got, let me zoom in actually. You guys can see it in action a little bit better. Fairly easy to control, would be good for someone who's heavy handed. Just be careful not to snap it. The hunt nibs tend to be not really built to look go the distance, not really built to last forever. And they can't really take too, too much pressure. So if you're super heavy handed, this might not be the nib for you, but I'm heavy handed and I've used crow quills with few adverse effects. So you are about as heavy handed as I am. I know, right? Easy to tell over the internet. You'll be fine. But if you're like elephant handed, it might be a problem. And now since this nib is sharp, I'm gonna need to give some of these areas time to dry before I go back into them. Otherwise I will tear up the paper. Which is fine for an ink test, but not really good form to demonstrate to you guys, especially those of you guys who are watching these videos to maybe hone your inking abilities. I gotta be careful though, because this last hunt drawing nib monstrosity is still wet. Now the shame about these hunt crow quills is they work really, really good until they suddenly stop working at all. And then for me, I think it's probably because I put too much pressure on them. 
uh, I can never get that nib to work again and I have to get a new one. And that does happen even with expensive nibs from time to time. So it's not, you know, completely out of the question. But I've noticed it tends to happen with my hunt nibs a little bit more. back into her eyes in a minute. Since it's wet, I don't want to tear up the paper. Ugh, see, did that already. Okay, wipe it off on a piece of paper. All right, so I could end it here, always could. Get it a little, little. Of course, I'm gonna end up tearing up the paper. That's why I was gonna wait. But I can't wait because I'm patient. Always, always my problem. There, whatever. We're done. We're done. Woohoo! So that is the Hunt 102. It's really not bad. Um, you can get them in packages of two. And I believe the two tend to be like two different nibs, like the 102 and like a 104 or something like that. You can also get them in the larger drawing sets and you can get them open stock from places like Paper and Ink Art. And you can find a link in my description below to get your own if you happen to like the look of this nib or you wanna try it out for yourself. Nibs are a very inexpensive indulgence. They are often around a dollar open stock, unless if you buy them in a set. So Hunt 102, a classic and not a bad one at that. There is a reason it is such a common sight, but do be careful. They can snap. You can um, press so hard that the nibs get out of alignment and they won't hold ink anymore. So just, just keep that in mind. Maybe have some backups. Maybe don't use a 102 if you've only got one left and you're on a tight deadline and it has to be done, done, done. But again, not the worst nib, very easy to find. So even if you do snap it, you can get a replacement. So I wanna thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. Hanging out and checking out another nib review. And if you're new here, check out some of my other nib reviews from this year or head on over to last year's nib reviews or check out some of my other inking tutorials. So I hope you guys found this helpful, useful, and inspiring. If you got any questions or comments, let me know in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys with another nib video tomorrow. Bye.